levels of research to help you. I'll be doing that um, tomorrow a little bit as well. When we'll look at different models of research. But what I'm injecting here is, as you can keep saying, is like, it's like, just drop the fixed views. Drop the fixed views. Yeah? Because actually that's the start. Yeah? That's stopping you seeing. That stops us seeing. It's fine, however, it is fine to have fixed views, but just know that's the limited view you're seeing in the world. Yeah? That's all. In which case, your research will be saying, trauma from X perspective. That's the more truthful way of seeing. You know, the diamond model, one of a multiplicity of approaches, yeah. or one of a multiplicity of approaches that share many common threads. Yeah. The diamond model is a slight variation of um, Petrushka Clarkson's, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you know, uh, which is a variation of of somebody else's work and actually your work will be this wonderful unique model yeah. you'll be doing your own diamond model that's what you're doing yeah. can you see you will be, you're, you're being you you're being your own unique practitioner with your own unique model. And as long as you can stand behind your model and say, at this moment in time, that's how I work. Drop down. Yeah. Until you get into that <laughs> epistemic dichotomy. And we go, we discover something else. Yeah, and we discover something else. And we, we have it. Yeah. Oh, it's I mean, there's even a research I mean, question in that. Can yeah. you see, like, like, like this one? And this is fun. Is well, that well, that would be so. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, what it, you know, like, like, I mean, there, there's a good research title there, which could be, but is it right or wrong? Mm -hmm. You know, let's play with that. Yeah. You know, in some ways, maybe that's a lifetime question. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I suspect in some ways it is. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. yeah. Like maybe that is. It's like I know I do things different. You know, that's why. You know, uh, you know, we we begin by saying it's an impossible profession. Diet training for me has been key for cut and it has to be a momentary decision. Mm -hmm. and I take too long mm -hmm. and go into the process, the patient will be dead. Yeah. So also when I'm counseling, it's, it's sort of the decisions are in the moment. Mm -hmm. um, obviously I feel they're right, that's why mm -hmm. I do certain things which then I would question because of what I have been told in the past. Mm. As work goes on, I find that even what I was told in the past is okay now. Mm. Mm. So I'm more comfortable, yeah. but my, yeah. my decisions are very much, yeah. you know, sort of, yeah. the work is happening and suddenly you know, I would yeah. be doing something that I sort of thought, mm. that is what mm. is required at the moment. Sometimes we can't always know, you know, you know, what it is that we give that is of significance to someone. Yeah, we may, and again, that's that difference between what therapists think and what clients think, and maybe what the time, you know, post our therapeutic work that it has meant. You know. But we often don't get an opportunity to work again with clients after a number of years. You know? 
quite recently, interestingly, I had somebody who came to me. Um, I think she's now in her early fifties, and um, uh, and she said that she emailed me, asked if I had any spaces, and that somebody had recommended it to me. Uh, and actually, she did know me, and I looked at the name and I thought, I'm not sure. So, um, so I said about my availability, and um, and I said, and can you can you let me know how how we know me, how you know me? And she said, yes, you taught me about 25 years ago on a foundation course to counselling, and and I was trying to think, God, what did she look like? I can't remember what she looked like, you know. But I was trying to think of the course, and I had vague recollections, and I remember we had that really nice little intro courses that we did. They were like, like 12 weeks, I think, intro courses, just of two hour slots, and you know, just really nice. And I kind of, but hell, I couldn't really remember anything about them. And she came, she had a familiar face, but she was like 25 years old, and uh, in fact, I think it was even a bit longer. And um, uh, and so uh, she said to me, "It's really good to meet you. Um, you know that course had such an impact on me." And I went, oh. and I said, "You know, and you know, what did you really take away from it?" She said, "Well, <laughs> there was that one bit right near the end, and you brought in a box of stones." One of the things we had to do at the end was take a, a stone or a little gemstone and really speak on behalf of it, you know, about what the course had meant and how it represented us. I was kind of thinking, do you do that? <laughs> and, um, and she said, I've still got it. Oh, yeah, I've still got it. And it was some um, sort of semi-precious little bit like um, some, some cheap and some precious stones. She says, I've still got him, and it still meant a lot. Yeah. And it was like, who knew? Who knew? Yeah. Um, I, I didn't know, I didn't set out for that exercise to be, you know, significant. How could I? Because it's always what the individual does. It's, it, that's their ontological experience. <laughs> the changes, yeah, that, that, that beingness, um, which became a bit of an epistemological framework. And 25 years later, she comes and she says, actually, the same issue that I had then <laughs> has resurfaced big time, particularly now that some other has died. Sorry. Particularly now as her mother is dying, mm -hmm. and the the kind of relationship that was present then, apparently she had an alcoholic mother, is now raised big time. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so there we go. But the point of that story is we don't know sometimes what it is. It's, it's grades of significance, grades of significance. Mm. I suspect that rather like any intervention, if I'd set it up with a name, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have done. Do you not think? Like if I'd have set up that exercise as like, this is going to have you know, for the next 25 years, some significant deep uh, thing. Um, I guess. But and you didn't know that this would happen 25 years on. No. No, no, no. Yeah, no. Or that there would be, you know, that. that um, that the thread of the tiny whatever seed that was planted then um, would, would re-emerge. Yeah. Or that I would be in, in this individual's mind's eye. Yeah. But 
but we have to hold that as a responsibility. You know, that is the inner ethics, isn't it? You know, whether we're doing our work as teachers, mentors, supervisors, therapists. We potentially occupy such an important space in some society. So therefore there is a responsibility. And it's an ethical responsibility. Not just what somebody externally tells me, but what I can contain and so true. One has to have that clarity inside. So that you know all the time looking out for that conflict to be resolved. Because many times that ethical framework if you're sure about it, it doesn't shake so fast also. Which evolves eventually in time. But yes, it's important. And and the truth is that that I cannot give you the answer to that. Mm -hmm. Do you get that? Yeah. I don't know what the right or wrong is. And if I say that I do, I'm selling you snake oil. Yeah, like you said, your own values. Yeah. What are your values? Mm -hmm. You also bring in our values. Yeah. Sometimes when the client says, uh, when the client asks you for your opinion, mm -hmm. That opinion, of course, has to be genuine, authentic, truthful. But sometimes the, the truthfulness also has to factor in the well-being of your client, how much of the truth she can uh, absorb at this point. It might become counterproductive for her because uh, I can maybe see at, from my vantage point that she has a long way to go in evolving into a, a person which can hold a certain relationship. So there's a lot more work that is needed. Yeah. But if I'm going to be truthful to her, sometimes I struggle with the the kind of words I want to use. They have to be kind, they have to be sensitive, and maybe not as truthful uh, to me. It may sound truthful to her, but uh, it, there is a bit of a, you know, um, how should I Can you pledge in it? I want, didn't want to use buffering, that word, like that's the buffering word. the client. Yes, buffering extent. the client or camouflaging, mm -hmm. because that would be counterproductive to her. So the truth, as I see it, and as I am imparting it, is not the absolute truth as mm -hmm. I am holding it. But maybe in my uh, judgment call, that is that is. Uh, what I can give you. The window of I don't know if you understand what I am saying. I do, and I think I'm, I'm just thinking of something that happened for me yesterday. Um, after we finished, I'd I'd arranged to um, to FaceTime uh, uh, a client um, in the UK who um, uh, he's he's just been away and has come back in. He's got many many. Sort of distracting thoughts, um, uh, has many obsessive compulsive behaviors, and, um, and once a thought latches in, I mean, it's really destructive. And um, he'd made contact with me again, um, well, he'd made contact with me a while ago, and he just wanted to talk through something. This is a very bright man, he's also training as a therapist. Uh, he worked in a therapy organisation for many years and um, he's also quite a skilled meditator. Okay, just a few background details to him. Uh, his, he was very 
um, uh, kind of um, overwhelmed by his mother and his mother's needs. He felt like he had, he couldn't criticize her. Yeah. Um, so as a child, her needs were paramount. Yeah. Uh, and she was somebody who also had many obsessions around. I think uh, she had obsessions around warts and obsessions around unclean things. Um, and, and again, fairly obsessive behaviours that, that, that were part of his, his childhood. Um, and uh, he also had a sister who, I think when he was nine and she was a little bit older, uh, she did sort of sexual experiments with him. Um, you know, in other words, we could see that as abuse. Um, but, and, um, uh, and also told him that he must never, ever tell. Yeah. Ever tell. Um, so, you know, he was given, he, you know, so he's always holding the contamination, if you like. Um, that would be one interpretation of it. Um, so he's also a skilled meditator, um, but what he's done, he, he goes to a Buddhist center and he has, a, I think, quite a good teacher. Um, and, um, but actually his meditation practice has become both a form of escaping from and also a punishment, yeah. And so what that is, is that, so, okay, so this began where he went to, he went to a toilet, he was in a cafe, went to the toilet uh, to do a poo, and suddenly he got gripped by, by the obsessional thought. And this is how it works, okay? And it's painful, desperately painful. So his obsessional thought was, I better flush the toilet before I sit on it, because <coughs> I might get contaminated. That was the first. Can you see how the thought worked in? Then he thought, look, stop it, break that thought, just go to the toilet, and if there's any splash or anything, um, the chances of being, you know, kind of getting contaminated or getting a disease are just minuscule. Okay, that was it. Okay. Then another thought crept in, which was, you know, which was, ha, ah, maybe secretly though, I'm trying to kill myself. Yeah, and I'm trying to kill myself by doing this, you know, by putting myself at huge risk. Even though he knows it's ridiculous, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this doesn't matter. But this is the obsessional thought that he's then put himself at great risk, so therefore he's trying to kill himself. That then becomes, an, enter another thought. This is awful from a potential Buddhist perspective. He's trying to kill himself. That is an aberration yeah, to a precept that says you're supposed to be mindful of life. Yeah, can you see the agony that this man gets into? Okay. And it feels like nothing at that time will shift it. So, and then it becomes, he can't sleep, yeah? Because this thought hooks in, yeah? He can't sleep, he then starts to get symptoms, yeah? He's actually been in another country and where it's a bit hot, uh, and so the heat as well is playing into that. So he starts to get restless legs. Which he's then thinking like, it's so now he's at risk of fibromyalgia. He's also, can you see how, how like his life is an overwhelming story mm -hmm. of things, yeah? And in the, um, what's actually not happening is he cannot find a space of safety, yeah? Now, his Buddhist medita meditation teacher gave him a little window, yeah, because this teacher, you know, kind of just simply said to him, 
you're responding with fear to thoughts that are about non-existing things, okay, which is like, in other words, they're just thoughts. So therefore, these thoughts about killing yourself, then they're about non-existing things. Therefore, you're safe. No, you haven't infringed on any precept. Yeah? Which was, yeah, that was really important for someone in authority to say to him, no, you haven't. Yeah? He could find himself potentially creeping up with a, are you sure? But I got this from him yesterday. What was really important was the language that you gave to him. Probably it's okay, wouldn't work. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. What he needed in that moment was no, it's okay. You have not committed a Buddhist offense. In my view, it wasn't an offense anyway but like I don't have that authority of teacher in his view. Yeah. But can you see what the teacher did there? He responded to what the client needed in that moment. And from the Buddhist teacher, that was also true. No, you're okay. Categorically, no. Yeah. He needed to hear that. As a category, no. yeah. He then, he and I were talking, and I could, I was beginning to sense, you know, actually, what was therapeutically needed here. And if you think about it, it's what the parent does, you know, when the child is frightened and needs to know they're safe. They actually need to know the words you're safe. Yeah, not. It's, it's going to be okay. Can you see that wouldn't pass muster? I'm just thinking about the words and the choice of the words that we use. Right? Uh, and he asked me whether I felt the same about, about the, the no, because he knows my practice too. And, I, and initially what I said, and I went, mm, bit my tongue, uh, which was, yeah, I'm the same. I think, I think he's right. Can you see what I did? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I brought in a bit of doubt. Doubt. Yeah. Can you, you see? You put in the doubt. Yeah. Yeah. With I think, and I said I've got it. I can see what I'm doing, and I can see how my loose language here isn't helpful to you. No, you're okay. Yeah. In that moment, the thing here is, did it serve? What will serve? Mm -hmm. yeah. That was what was needed. Was needed yeah. Was what I did. Yeah. yeah, it needed to be categorical. That's what I got. I didn't get it at first. Yeah. Um, and there was something else which I can't remember. But but I I, I was really aware when I was doing it of, of saying, gosh, I'm being I'm really self-disclosing here. I'm, I'm letting him know what I feel. Yeah. Which is, you know say, is it okay to self-disclose on these things? Is it okay to give your opinion? I was giving an opinion there, wasn't I? Yeah. I was saying, yes, it's okay. Yeah. No, there's no infringement. That's an opinion. I gave it. Did it so? Yes, I think it did. Was I wrong to give an opinion? Which is partly your, your question, isn't it? Do I give do I give the advice in that moment? About yeah, my my uh, thing was the truthfulness uh, of that advice. Like what he wanted, like what your client wanted to hear from you was a categorically yes, he 
it was right. Mm -hmm. But what you gave him was, yes, I think he was right. Mm -hmm. But that also was sufficient for him. No, 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 but that wasn't good enough. But that wasn't good enough. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because in what he heard in that, and this is the part of his yeah. psyche that's really tricky. Yeah. All it needs is a tiny hook. Yeah. All it needs is that tiny hook mm -hmm. um, to set the catastrophic thinking. Yeah. Um, Would it take us 25 years to get? Well, you know, like, well, well, but, but the point is, is and it's, it really relates very much to what Scheister is saying as well around, is it right or wrong? Well, some people would say I was wrong. Yeah, maybe one perspective. If it served. Well, I'm saying from my side, I'm saying it's, did it serve? And in that, you know, he's, he's gone off to have a... Um, He's, he's had a moment of reprieve. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I'm thinking, I helicopter above, and then think longer term work here. Actually, if, I, if we were together to work out a plan, mm -hmm. yeah, um, like it's not just he and me, him and me. Um, actually, there's a multiplicity of other people that I think might be helpful here. Yeah. And he can see that. Yeah. He needs a rest. Guy is like looking towards breakdown if he continues with that, yeah, without rest. Yeah. How long can he go without sleep? Yeah. Not very long. But did it serve? I, in my, in my opinion, in that moment, yes. If someone, if I was called somewhere, you know, to say told this person that it was it was right and I'll say that's what I believed that was my opinion and I will stand by that opinion because you know these are my reasons why I think it's uh, it's such I think it's for me one of the hardest dilemmas at times to be able to actually like give that kind of very because it's it's a very clear like mm -hmm. yes or no, right? In this case too, what you're giving him. And this morning, early morning, I was on Skype with a client and who is in a very stressful marital situation and it's like over the last few weeks, whenever weekly or sometimes even bi weekly I I Skype with her. She's now in a position where she's under so much stress, so much pressure, it's almost, it's, it's gone worse in the relationship together. Mm -hmm. And so she says maybe I should just at least go on a trip just to get away, like, mm -hmm. temporarily, right? And it's been on my, you know, I've been thinking actually, like, we need to find her some kind of a way that she can resource herself again. Mm -hmm. Like she's so depleted. I kind of see her every time with less less mm -hmm. energy to be able to cope with this situation. And I was really sitting there kind of holding myself back. However, I brought in, well, you know, how can you resource yourself? Right? How can you take care of yourself in that situation? But it's it's for me often that thing of indeed saying to a client at that time what about going away for a little bit? Mm -hmm. And knowing that she has that possibility mm -hmm. too, right? mm -hmm. it's like, but that, that sense of almost bringing in something with certainty mm -hmm. or in a, a clear advice to somebody mm -hmm. is for me, I find that really difficult. Mm -hmm. And maybe it comes in again with something that's taught to us too when mm -hmm. we go through the course mm -hmm. of something, one of those rules that sits there somewhere with me that says you can't give advice mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a no mm -hmm. but the joke Such is yeah, yeah. but the joke is in all of this it's a bit like 
if we don't do something, we're maintaining. Like by not giving advice, we're giving advice. Definitely. Does that make yeah, sense? This is so yeah. true. Yeah. So true. You know, so yeah. sometimes by withholding, you're giving a strong message. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's a bit like you know, by you know, like like you know, the, the old classic thing that we'd say in terms of you know politics and and so on. Sometimes by not speaking out, we're maintaining the status quo. Very much. You're also holding a political line. Yes. Yeah. You know, by not saying that, we're sometimes doing that. Yeah. But but what we have to, but I suppose what what we're having to require of ourselves at that time is just sufficient self-awareness a bit. Yeah. I was very clear yesterday. You know, and I, I, was, I was disclosing, yes, you know, he's right. I would stand by that. I would hold that for myself. Yeah. Um, you know, that there's, you know, partly his teacher was coming from a deeply compassionate place. Yeah. He was holding, as indeed I was holding, what the client doesn't have. Just deep compassion for himself. But I can hold that. I can hold that. I'm going to wait until tomorrow to do the guided imagery because I think um, I think we've just planted so many seeds today. But if you have any, maybe we spend the next five or ten minutes. Um, just, just kind of sharing together, you know, like, like in, in the last, from a little bit from today and today. What are you, what sense are you making of this, of, of this work, you know, when we begin looking at being a, an independent practitioner? What sense are you beginning to open up to when we talk about research and so on? Just, just give me a sense of like, like, how is it going for you right now? I'm you... feeling more empowered after yeah. today's uh, insights from you and the class discussion. Mm -hmm. I feel, mm -hmm. I'm feeling uh, in a better place. Mm -hmm. Maybe with a little more clarity, a little more confidence. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at all the things that I was a little shaky or confused about mm -hmm. as an independent practitioner. I've been doing some of these things, so I feel like it is. I feel that you know, it's now out in the open. Like I, I'm an assertive person. I, I do what I think is right. I do what I what feels right. And I've been doing some of these things, and I feel yeah, okay. it's good. It's like your client needed to hear, and I needed to hear from you. It's okay. But not always okay. Yeah. No, no, no. Of course, you need to use that. It's like, this is tricky it's stuff, it's isn't it? it? it is. like, yes. Can you see? <laughs> Does it serve? Keeping the ultimate. For me, this sensor is a self reflection. And there is a gut feeling. You keep on reflecting and reflecting, and gut feeling comes. And when he said, when it feels right to you, mm -hmm. your sense of values, and you feel aligned, then you actually go with it in a flow mm -hmm. without that conflict. And there's a little kind of like a pause before you actually jump into it. Just go with the fact, I can do it if I want to. Mm -hmm. More than that, let me see what's happening, what's happening. I think a lot of questioning inside is also. A, because there is a little bit of a supervisor for me, I can tell that, mm -hmm. since inside. So that is something that probably is very helpful when you say self reflect. Why are you doing this? Why do you want to do this work? Why are you in this profession? Why do you want to continue doing this? So yes, there is a lot of stirring up and a lot of Tetris blocks are sort of fitting and making sense of things. 
because when you were just sharing that, I was showing Anita that all those were sitting there, the word fluid, karma with not knowing. That was what the words I wrote yesterday for myself. So, yeah, because that has been my own personal journey from knowing and then thinking, okay, this is the right way to do it, this is the wrong way to do it. And then being in that great, not knowing. That has been a comfortable feeling. So, so it's sort of getting validated, self-reflect and think about it. And it's okay to, to, to kind of say, I thought I knew something and now I know nothing. I'm more confused now. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's okay too. I think confusion is good, somehow I feel. Even uh, when the clients come and they're confused, that's when the work starts. Mm -hmm. If they're not confused, they're not coming to us. Mm -hmm. It is that confusion, that they can't handle that confusion anymore, that they look for that help. <coughs> and I think if we sort of reflect on ourselves also, I think that's probably good to be confused. Because Michael has actually given us a flavor of that confusion. So we said, <laughs> process that. But I think it, it is good. Because there have been a lot of, like we're telling you words that have been sitting with that. For me, yes, rescue was this word. Mm -hmm. So you're not having to unlearn and learn and unlearn and learn. And somewhere you do have some value that stays on and you just mm -hmm. brush it off. Mm -hmm. But then you sort of go on picking things mm -hmm. that work for us. Yeah. 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 It's really uncomfortable though, isn't it, when you're confused? Mm -hmm. When you don't know what's going on. It's, it's really helpful. I mean, I can notice those places in me where I'll go to known things, <laughs> you know, rather than kind of, you know, going, I have no idea what's going on here. I do not know what to do. It's good to know you feel that too. Oh, I hear all the time. comfortable with them or you know but so that's the question that keeps coming like am I being authentic right now because if I really showed my feeling it'd be like oh, I push my chair back or something so that's something that you know it hasn't happened that many times but a couple of times it has I feel like I don't feel like going for the session I have to you know extra push myself and that's always been something of a concern for me as well. How do I manage? Am I managing it properly? Am mm -hmm. I being as authentic as I can? Mm -hmm. Let's keep this unfolding. Let's keep this unfolding. Um, and maybe between now and tomorrow, can just keep inviting you to ponder something which is like what, what kind of interests me in, the, in, in my work you know or what big questions do I have yeah. or where's my sticking places in this work yeah. sticking places as in um, yeah, you know, like, I always get stuck here, or I never quite know what to do, or, um, so it could be, you know, something of that quality, or what would I really like to look at? Sorry? What would I really like to look at? What really inspires me? Hopefully, one of the, we'll, 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 we'll do some, we're going to really work with this tomorrow. Sorry. Oh, 
But we're going to really work with this. Who's the, who's the? Oh, was it? No, 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 that's all right. No, I, I heard it and I thought it was Shasta. So, um, but if we keep, if we keep, if we just kind of keep staying open to, to this, um, and I'm all, I, I think we're already planting the seed that you are going to be doing a research project. Yeah. You are going to be doing some research. And I am, I'm going to stay that I say that I, I hold firmly with the work of a very dear colleague of mine called Robert Romanishin, whose work I will introduce to you. Who said he talked? You know, we talk about about the wounded healer. That we come into this work because of our own woundedness. Mm -hmm. He talks about the wounded researcher, mm -hmm. and in his and I'll be introducing you some to some of his work around the wounded researcher, and the premise of his work, which is beautiful, which is that we think we know what research we're doing. So even now and tomorrow, you know, we'll be thinking about what is the research I want to do. And Bob has this notion that the research has you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the research has you. And that's just, if, you, if I just let that sit with you. You think you know what you're going to, what you're being driven to research, but from another more poetic place, the research has already got you. Yeah. Yeah, if you listen to it, yes. yeah. you may think you know what you want to do, mm -hmm. but the research has you. Mm -hmm. And I'll just leave you with that. That this thing that you've been searching for for so long yeah, is here and always has been here. In the same way that your very woundedness brought you to do healing work. Yeah. It's that whole beautiful thing, isn't it, when your very first client displays exactly the same difficulties that you had. Yeah, can you remember your first time? Can you see your pattern in them? research. Can it be something new or does it have to come from the work done? Whatever the research is demanding of you, <laughs> it can be. I know that you have a you have a thought um, in terms that's based on some work that you're doing. So, um, so it can be that, or who knows? Um, particularly when we're doing this kind of research, um, we may find something else that's already been asked to be looked at. Yeah. And you may find that actually you'll discover what your research really is and we may not have an opportunity here to do it. But no matter, yeah, you'll have an opportunity to be guided by it. Yeah. Let's finish for there for now. Okay, but well Thank done. You. Thank you. Good morning's work.